The views and opinions of the following show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of News Talk 1450 WOL, Radio 1 Incorporated, or their management. Welcome to Beyond Just Talk. This is a positive, inspirational, and thought-provoking program that discusses life and business topics from a solution-oriented perspective with your host, S.L. Young. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This week, we've got my theme music going, so welcome to another edition of Beyond Just Talk. It's another great day, and we're ready to discuss subjects that will make a difference in your day. This is the place that people connect, ideas are shared, and lives are enriched. My name is Stacey Young. My author's name is S.L. Young, but please call me Sly. Before we get started today, next week, my guest is someone who is doing some very important work to support individual, community, and societal development. This individual works at the Arlington County Detention Facility, manages the volunteer programs that aid in inmate development, gave my nonprofit organization, Saving Our Communities at Risk Through Educational Services, its first major community outreach opportunity. So I'm excited to have that guest on next week. For this week, we're going to do a little recap of last week's show, interview my guest today, Rashawn McDonald, and preview next week's guest. So a little bit of recap from last week's show. So last week, in starting this show, I did a little bit of introduction about me and my background. And the reasons that I started with an overview about my background is because a lot of us go through challenges, and I think it's important to have a perspective in terms of what my background experiences are so and what I'm going to be bringing to the airways because this show is about life and business and we're going to discuss things that will help individuals along their way. And from my experiences, my dark days were necessary for me to get me to this path right now, which I believe reflects my destiny. And sometimes the challenges we experience prepares for future opportunities if we learn from them. So I didn't have an opportunity to provide you with any information last week on some of my website and additional information, so I'm going to take a moment and do that now. So my website is slyoung.com. If you want to get information on the show and listen to past um, sessions, you can go to slyoung.com slash bjt hyphen radio. R-A-D-I-O dot H-T-M-L. If you want to become a fan of the show on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash beyond just talk. That's beyond just talk altogether. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at at S-L-Y-O-U-N-G-V-A or on Google Plus at google.com slash plus S-L-Y-O-U-N-G-V-A. And before we go on, I have to take a moment to stop and recognize someone who is extremely important to me and has helped me so much on my journey, especially my writing journey, who has spent hours upon hours reading my books, being very critical, providing some excellent feedback to make my books better. But I forgot to mention her last week when I was thanking all the folks that have helped me because none of us do any of this alone. So I want to take a moment. A special shout out to someone who I love dearly, Joanne Workman. Thank you so much for all of your support. And then our guest today, Rashawn McDonald, a couple of weeks ago told me during our interview as I was about to write an article about him on the Huffington Post, he offered a couple of salient points about understanding your personal value. One of the first quotes that he gave to me out of our session or one of the quotes I took out of our session is the value you give to frustration will impact the amount of success you'll achieve. The second salient point that he gave during our interview was stop devaluing your contribution to life and start helping other people. Then you'll get a better understanding of your value. Well, this guidance made me think about a note that I received from my first grade teacher, Mrs. Powell and a teacher's aide, Mrs. Washington, which identified my passion. Because my passions were identified long before I ever realized it in first grade. And their note to me basically said that I like to help the other students in the class. And the reason that this is significant now is that I've identified my passion 
and as Mr. McDonald helped me to remember my value. And that is helping others learn. So now I'm living my life and living with purpose and passion. And how I do that is through teaching college students and inmates, writing about life and business challenges on the Huffington Post and on my blog on my website. The speaking engagements that I do to inspire others to move beyond their past challenges or current personal limitations to move toward positive and actionable goals. And then doing this show. So while pursuing my dreams, I've been told no so many times that I've redefined the word to mean new orientation, which can lead com- committed individuals to identify other options to fulfill a dream or sometimes their destiny. Because just because someone's telling you no, that might not be the person that you need to speak to. So when someone tells me no and it's something that I want to do and it's, it's something that's positive and it's going to help others as well as myself, then I need to go and have a conversation with someone else. So it's just something for you all to think about. And if you're interested in my article about Rashawn McDonald, it's available on my website at slyoung.com slash Rashawn, that's R-U-S-H-I-O-N, hyphen McDonald, M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D dot H-T-M-L. And the article is entitled Rashawn McDonald, Architect Behind the Steve Harvey Global Media Brand. And before I introduce today's guest, I want listeners to know that if you'd like to join our conversation, you can call 1-800-450-7876. Again, that's 1-800-450-7876. And now, I'd like to introduce my guest today. My guest, who I'm very much delighted to have on today, (laughs) is Rashawn McDonald. Mr. McDonald is an entertainment powerhouse, a Hollywood writing veteran, a philanthropist, a man who clearly cares about others, and the architect who negotiated the deals behind the Steve Harvey global media brand, and my new friend. Welcome to the show, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, America. America, (laughs) thank you. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> well, before we jump into our interview today, I think it's great to make a personal connection with the audience. So absolutely, who is Rashawn McDonald? Uh, a person who cares. If you look at my body of work, uh, the TV shows starting with Steve's Me and the Boys in the 1993 to Parenthood to Arsenio Hall sitcom to Sister, Sister, the Twins with Tia and Tamara Maori to Jamie Foxx show to uh, the Parkers, to the Neighborhood Awards. I'm always involved with projects that uplift people or make them feel better. I don't get involved in projects that make uh, people feel that are mean-spirited. So I'm always about motivating and uplifting. The D- Disney Dreamers Academy, where we, Steve and I bring 100 students to Disney every year for the past eight years. His mentoring camp in Dallas for single moms, where we probably brought over several thousands of boys down there free of charge. Uh, to mentor them during Father's Day weekend. So I get you, and then now the thing that's proven real popular now is my money-making conversations, which is about uh, uplifting uh, adults and young people in the world of business and career advice for free. And so I know I get a lot of money in my life through things, my services, but to be able to give back and affect people in a positive way, I think that I'm just building trust. I'm building trust that a person like me can't care with no attachments. Well, that's absolutely wonderful. And so let's back up a little bit in your story because folks need to catch up. So (laughs) you you had a a successful career at IBM and you decided to walk away from that to pursue a comedy career. So tell us what drove you to, to walk away from something that you were doing, that you were doing well at, that you'd study for to pursue something that was risky. Well, every, Doing this radio show for you is a risk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I tell people all the time, people don't understand the word risk. There's certain words that people allow them to block themselves successfully, like the word selfish, like the word risk, the word fear. These are just terms and how much power you give to these terms. And because they're risking everything you do. You buy a house. Would you be able to pay the rent on your apartment? Would you buy a car? Would you be able to make the, the car notes? Everything you do is a risk. You have to value what you put it in your life. And so, you know, my degree is in mathematics, and I graduated from the University of Houston. And I got it. And, and it was interesting. Now, let me just tell a little story. Back in my employment with IBM, 
I was in college. Uh, it took me seven years to graduate from college. So nothing in my life has been, like, really swift, okay? I've earned it, and I've put time in it, and, I've, and life has allowed me to mature into making these adjustments. And when I – I was like in my, I was like, uh, I was like an advanced sophomore going into my fifth year, okay, <laughs> and um, and I and I wanted to make a commitment to my education, and so I decided to leave a full time job because I was doing going to school at night, and um, so there were two job offers opportunities given to me, one was by IBM, but they could only guarantee me that I would be there for a semester, and then I had another programming job offered to me that was full time, great pay, there was no. It was no uh, restrictions on how long I would be employed there. And so I sat down with the gentleman. He said, Rashawn, we've never broken this rule. This is the IBM way. Um, at the, you you have a job from uh, August and December. We're going to let you go. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool. So, so I took the job. So it was a risk. And what I did was I went and made friends with everybody on the floor, and I took job responsibilities away from them, things that they didn't want to do. And I went by them every day, and I took those assignments. And around about November, I started telling them that they was gonna. I had to leave in December. Well, they made a big fuss about that because I made myself needed. I made myself responsible to the job, and I stayed there two and a half years. And so uh, I tell that story to let people know that you know that's a risk. He gave me an option, and I, but I didn't fear the risk. I just developed a plan to succeed. And the plan was that I was going to develop a, a need that became so strong in the office environment that they would change the rules. And they did. They allowed me to stay there for two and a half years because I, I became a responsible young employee. And then when I graduated from college uh, in two years, they made me a full-time employee. Mm -hmm. And that's the story of my IBM career when it's time to leave, which is one of a very hard decision. I'm going to let you know that. I'm not going to sit up here and act like I just woke up and said, hey, I knew where my next check was going to come from gig to gig doing stand-up comedy. But I also knew that it was a risk that I had to take to challenge my life to do something I wanted to do. And notice I'm doing everything that I want to do, though. Okay, so I, well, we'll take a break, and we'll be back in just a moment. Mm -hmm. News updates on the web at WOLDCnews.com. Good morning. This WOL traffic and weather update brought to you by the Foundation for a Better Life on the inner loop of the Beltway heading east on 495. The accident was after University Boulevard before New Hampshire Avenue cleared now, but it's still very slow all the way back to Connecticut Avenue on the inner loop heading eastbound on the Beltway. Accident, Benning Road, Minnesota Avenue gone southbound 295, slowing from Benning Road to East Capitol Street. Virginia Avenue still have the ramp to New Hampshire Avenue blocked because of the parking lot collapse there. Winston Churchill's words stirred his country in the face of defeat. Today they inspire us to reach for our own victories, commitment, pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Now your WOL weather forecast for today. A mix of clouds and sun. Very warm day today, high near 91 degrees. A few passing clouds overnight, turning cooler down to 59. Tomorrow, a sunny, cooler day. A couple of afternoon clouds possible, but a high near 71. Steve Hirshhorn for News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. Imagine a family that was almost fed by neighbors who almost volunteered to help them out. Almost volunteered to give them their first hot meal in weeks. Almost volunteered. But as anyone knows, when it comes to giving, almost doesn't count. Don't almost give. Give. Give of your time, your money, your kindness. To find out how, visit our website at don'talmostgive.org. This message brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to Beyond Just Talk with your host, S.L. Young. All right, folks. Thanks for rejoining. You're listening to WLDC 1450 AM, Beyond Just Talk. And my guest today is Rashawn McDonald. So prior to the break, you were telling us about, uh, you know, taking the risk to, to walk away from a successful job. As a follow-up question, do you recommend that others make such a risky move? Yes, if they're not happy. If they, they feel that they're not doing what they, what they want to do. And uh, that's very key. I, I, get, I run into so many people that are frustrated by what they do, but then don't want to challenge themselves to find out what they want to do. And then if you find out what you want to do, are you willing to do it? Because either way it goes, there's going to be work involved. There's going to be challenges that are unknown to you in the course of achieving whatever you do in life. And most people are just afraid 
it's, it's so many elements of trying to stop themselves from being successful. I would tell you, look in the mirror. If you can see the person in that mirror that you want to be, then you're headed in the right direction. Remove the makeup. Look inside your soul. Look inside your spirit. Challenge yourself because makeup can be removed. Challenge yourself inside, and that's the person you really want to see. Yeah, and sometimes the hardest step is that first step towards a new destination because taking that step to jump off the ledge and say, I'm going to go do this and I'm not going to look back, that's hard. So what advice do you give folks to to do that? Because you can have a dream that says, I want to do this, but then actually taking that step, it could be totally different. First of all, your dream is is not going to be common to anybody else but you, okay? Let's get Mm -hmm. that out the way first. Mm -hmm. So trying to get advice about your dream from someone is impossible. So that's where the first negative spirit can can consume you, trying to find people that agree with what you want to do because, quite frankly, they're going to disagree, and they're going to go the common sense route and say, that doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So I left IBM. I made that decision a year prior to leaving IBM, okay? I didn't like going there two weeks in advance, say, I'm out. I made that decision a year in advance. So so I, I settled into the whole process of planning an exit, making an exit plan. And even in that process, it wasn't perfect, but at least I knew I had a plan of action. And that's really, really what the key is. What is your plan of action to move in the next direction? And you can't do it on the spur of the moment. You can't say, I went in the room and prayed on it and come out the room and say, I quit. You cannot do that. Mm-hmm. You cannot do that. Mm-hmm. You have to have a plan of action that makes sense to you and also your financial needs. Now, because in the end, you're going to, and there's no perfect time. Like, you know, you can say, well, I want to save $50,000. I want to save $20,000. No. Give yourself a day you're going to exit and exit. That's the key. You have to have an exit day and stay committed to that date of change. Yeah, and I'm sure that you experienced a lot of naysayers a, a, along your path <laughs> that said, you shouldn't do this, you can't do this. Absolutely. So, uh, so how did you process that internally to, to move forward past that when folks were telling you, you're crazy, you can't do this, why are you doing this? That comes into passion and, and believing that uh, this is something that you want to do. And do you evaluate, are you happy with what you're doing? Are you really, really happy with what you're doing? If you say yes, then stay where you're at, and then 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 achieve what you should out of that position that you are. You know, don't settle where you're at. If you're happy with what you're doing, excel at what you're doing. If you're not happy with what you're doing, evaluate your options on what you want to do. You know, and that's really really the key because when people tell you something, you have to have confidence that you can't do it. You have to have confidence to look past their naysay values or their negative spirit, or their fears. And if you overcome that, then you'll win big. You have to be able to win big in the long run. And winning big in the long run is planning an exit that's, that works for you. Not for them, that works for you. Mm-hmm. And, I, and another risk that you took was going into business with a friend. And mm-hmm. so did you have any reservations with doing business with a friend? And before you answer that, folks might not realize that you had at least a, a, a decade or more of a friendship before you decided to go into business with Mr. Harvey, Harvey correct? Absolutely. You know, the thing about it was that it, it was kind of a, a, a situation where that uh, when Steve and I went into business, which was in uh, basically right before he taped um, the Kings of Comedy movie. Uh, we sit in the restaurant and we wrote out his opening act in an Italian restaurant. And it was and he said, Hey man, let's do this. I said, Cool. And we went to Charlotte Charlotte and we shot the show and basically that was his that was his stamp of greatness at that point, you know, because Cedric became a star, DL became a star, and the late Bernie Mac became a star as well as Steve. Well, in that process, I was kinda like still on the fence of one hundred percent commitment. It wasn't until two thousand five which is five years later, that I really said, you know some, we can do this. We can be great together. Because you, I've learned then that you can't, if you want to, you can't be halfway committed to something. You have to be 100% committed to it if you want to achieve ultimate success. And we were partially successful until I, when I, when I sat down with him and he said, Rashawn, you ready to do this? I said, let's do this. And then we resigned our position to do ro- local radio in L.A., and we took on a syndicated Network with Clear Channel at the time would only have four stations, and now we have 76 stations and 8 million weekly listeners 10 years later. So it got there because he was fully committed and I was fully committed. 
So doing business with a friend, you know, as we've been talking about is a risk, but were there any special operating agreements or arrangements that you had to protect the friendship? No, no. You know, it, it's like a marriage to me, man. You know, there, there were no, uh, there were no uh, clauses saying, hey, you know, I'm protected. We went in there with a, well, let's, let's put it this way. We were two natural hustlers. Okay. <laughs> he was strong willed. I was a very talented writer, producer. He's a very talented host and stand up comedian. And we wanted to win. We wanted to win. So no contract would, would have made a difference in that. You know, we just wanted to win. We shook hands. Hey, man, let's go do this. And I think that's the, really the deal in, in achieving. You know, he respected who I was. I respected who he was. And we still respect each other today about what we do. We do different projects, mm-hmm. and we do different things in our lives. But if he needs some help, uh, he'll call me. Like he called me on the way into work uh, asking me to do something for him. I said, no problem. I, I, I'll fix it up for you. And if I need help, i call him and say, hey, man, can you do this for me? And that's how it works when you're friends. When you talk about business, it's about what relationship you want. If you, if, if you have to have a contract that binds your relationship, then you don't have a friendship. Mm. And I just want to remind folks that you're listening to WLDC 1450 AM, Beyond Just Talk with S.L. Young. And my guest today is Rashawn McDonald. And so how did you know that the relationship would work? Uh, first of all, we were exactly the same people. You know, he is a tremendous worker, and I'm a tremendous worker. And he utilizes every hour in a 24-hour clock, and I utilize every hour in a 24-hour clock. So we have, we have very similar personalities. And secondly, we don't accept the word no very easily. Because in our business, if we did, we would have never made it. And so, because we're African-American males and in a business of entertainment. And we've been successful at this for 22 years. And so that's because we've strived. We've been able to change. You know, we weren't stuck in one alley. You know, we started in sitcoms. Then we went to radio in 2000. Then we went to syndicated radio in 2005. Then we went to books in 2009. Then we went to syndicated game show in 2010. Then we went to talk show in 2011. It keeps going on and on. You know, as you can see, we keep shifting and keep changing our dynamics. So we weren't afraid of change. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to risk. What will people do if you do a, if you do a game show? Will people think you're funny anymore? We, we couldn't worry about that. We had to believe that the decision that we were making will be best for the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. And then even, you know, moving past the risk and the fear, when you, when you look back and you look at all the success that both of you have had, do you have any regrets? No, I, I can't say that because here's, here's the whole thought process is that you're living life to succeed. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, and there are going to be things, I'm, I'm sure if you look at President Obama, he, you ask him, hey, well, if you knew everything was going to happen, and would you still run for president? He said yes, because guess what? You can't, for, you can't foresee the future. All you can do is see the opportunity and take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. And that's all I did, and that's all Steve Harvey's done. We've just saw opportunities, and we've taken advantage of it. And we've been smart enough in the process of taking advantage of it, of reaching back and supporting our community. And that's really the key, is that we believe in supporting and, 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 and giving back and making a difference in people's lives. We just don't sit out here just ride in the big car, afraid to communicate with our listeners. We're not like that. Afraid to uh, walk down and shake hands or afraid to give our scholarships and things like that. We don't do that. We are people who believe that if you move forward, you have to look back. Okay, great. And if, or just a reminder, folks, if you'd like to join the conversation, you can dial in at 1-800-450-7876. So, Mr. McDonald, what advice do you have for someone who is starting a new initiative to develop their brand? Uh, first of all, they need to understand social media. And uh, that is really a game changer. I was uh, talking to some people yesterday about how social media, and, and everybody needs to understand, I don't care if you're a bank teller or uh, a mom or a truck driver, you have a brand now. Because social media has forced you to take on a brand. Because when we were growing up, at least when I was growing up, you were just in a telephone book. You had no face. You know, I didn't know if you had family members. I didn't know your lifestyle. But social media has, has put a face on billions of people now. 
And so what that means is that now you have to be responsible for who you are and the image that you are projecting. So the number one thing that you have to do if you are starting out, if you, if the number one thing you have to do, period, is that you have to protect your brand. And your brand has to be just as important as good credit. And as you develop your brand and allow the general public to see it is how you'll be successful in life. Well, great. Thank you. And then, so one of the other things that I know a lot of us challenged with, uh, that we're challenged with as we're trying to figure out how do we make it, is does everyone need an agent or a manager? Why or why not? Well, it depends on who you are. I always tell people is that just because you get an agent and just because you get a manager don't mean you should stop working. Because whatever attracted them to you, you need to keep doing. Because generally, an agent or a manager also has another client. And they, and especially if you sign with a big agency, a Hollywood agency, so that means that they may have a, they may have ten thousand people on their roster. So you cannot stop your hustle. So can you be successful without an agent? Yeah, to a certain point. And but at a certain point, you have to have somebody to negotiate your deal. You know, so you have to at least have a lawyer involved with your whole process. But the bottom line is that you can be successful, but at some point, you will have to bring a lawyer into the picture. And if you feel that you're getting busy, you'll bring a manager into the picture, somebody that can support you and make sure that the opportunities you're getting are the correct ones moving forward. And it shouldn't be your best friend, cousin, <laughs> or your sister. It should be somebody who understands the business. And a lot of people make mistakes like that. They get their husbands to do it or their wives to do it. And, and I'm not saying nothing negative, but if they've never done this business before, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Yeah, it can be a challenge sometimes to try to do things alone and also trying to bring folks along along with you that don't have the experience. So now you have a bunch of folks that don't necessarily have the experience. We well, all um, sitting in the room confused. Exactly. And right there, we're going to need to take another break. <laughs> so uh, we'll be back in a few moments. Thank you. News updates on the web at WOLDCnews.com. This report brought to you by LifeLock. Your social security number is a key piece of information identity thieves use to impersonate you. Become a LifeLock member now. Use code TRUTH to save 10% at LifeLock.com. Gas-powered equipment being used without a vent is being blamed for carbon benign poisoning. Eleven workers are hospitalized, some with serious injuries, but all are expected to survive. We think uh, it's dangerous at 30 parts per million. Uh, when we first entered this building, it was a couple hundred parts. I don't have the exact count, but I think it was up four or 500 parts per million. Montgomery County Fire EMS spokesman Pete Perringer says it happened yesterday afternoon at a construction site in Rockville. A longtime music teacher could go to prison for the rest of his life after admitting to child sex abuse. Montgomery County prosecutors say 56-year-old Lawrence Joins victimized at least 15 children, usually in his classroom during school hours. Joins taught for 27 years at 11 different schools in the county. He was arrested two years ago and pleaded guilty yesterday to incidents at two schools in Silver Spring. Many events are scheduled in the district as part of National Police Week. Special tributes will be paid this week to 273 law enforcement officers whose names are being added to the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Northwest Washington. Three officers from Virginia and one from Maryland who died last year are among those being honored. The 27th Annual Candlelight Vigil will be held tomorrow evening at the memorial. I'm Tom Roberts. Four Gold's Gym locations that closed in Maryland will have to pay refunds. The state attorney general has ordered owners of the clubs in Baltimore, Annapolis, Edgewater, and Towson to return nearly $600,000 to more than 7,500 people they paid in advance for long-term memberships. This report brought to you by Jiffy Lube Signature Service. Not just an oil change, Jiffy Lube checks vital fluids, tire pressure, lights, wipers, even vacuums the interior. JiffyLubeDC.com. I'm John Lewis. When you're looking for news from Black America, go to news1.com. News updates on the web at woldcnews.com. Welcome back to Beyond Just Talk with your host, S.L. Young. All right, folks, welcome back. Again, you're listening to WLDC 1450 AM. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can dial in at 800-450-7876. My guest today is Rashawn McDonald. And so right before the break, we were talking about whether someone should need an agent or a manager. And you were saying not necessarily. You need, right. But let's continue on with that line of um, conversation. Sure. And so what advice do you have for someone who's trying to get their first break? Um, it depends on the talent. You know, I, like because I, yeah, I, that's, a, that's a pretty generic question. 
because if you're a stand-up, you know, you can earn money um, if you get talented enough to, by telling jokes. If you're a singer, you can earn money by if you're talented enough by singing. If you're an actor, that means that you have to find some place that, which is the most difficult of all the tasks, to find somebody to hire you in a cast or to to make money. And so initially the two talents that can get you there faster is act is singing and stand up. And um so I would uh, the way I did it as a stand up, I just went to clubs and um I went to clubs and uh, went on stage and told jokes and eventually got good enough to travel around the country and eventually did television shows, and, made, and that's how I've generated my revenue. Now, what I get a lot in my money-making conversations is that I do on my Facebook on Monday, noon Eastern, is that people ask me the same question I was telling. First of all, establish a business plan. And people go, well, how do you find out about a business plan? Well, you go to the Small Business Administration, and they'll tell you how to lay out a business plan. Because what happens is – Everybody wants to, and then also, secondly, understand the value of social media when you're planning your future, whether it's in entertainment, whether it's in college, or whether it's in business. Understand the value of social media, and that's really, really key in in, in planning and moving forward and establishing your brand. I'm going back to the word brand that is now a very popular term. It's a very popular term because of social media. Mm-hmm. And then let's for a moment think about fear and, and self-doubt. Did either of these have an impact on your or Mr. Harvey's collective success? What, fear? Fear or self-doubt. No, I can't. You know, because it, it, I'm just, I would tell you this. Every decision you make, fear is in there, doubt is in there. So I'm, it's, you can ask anybody who, Russell Wilson, going to the Super Bowl. He, it, there's a doubt, a love, it has to be in there. That's what, makes, just what keeps you whole. That's what keeps you common. That's what keeps you... You know, that, is, that keeps the arrogance down, that fear, and, and, and recognizing that, that it is there and recognizing that it's all right to have it. It's all right to be nervous. You know, it's all right to question yourself. It just don't be consumed by that nervousness. Don't be consumed by that fear, and don't be consumed by that doubt. That's mm-hmm. all. It's all right to have it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that makes me think back to something that I, I've been told many, many times is that um, having fear and being nervous is not a, a not a bad thing. Someone once said to me, they, they asked me if I got nervous before I did a speaking engagement, you know, and I said, yeah, I get nervous every time. It's just natural. It's part of the process. But True. I understand what it is. True. And what someone once told me is when you don't have that nervousness or fear, then that's when there's an issue, because then you might be overconfident. Um, so I like to have a little bit of nervousness and fear before I go on stage. And so what were some of the keys to growing this entertainment empire? The key was uh, taking risk. <laughs> 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 you know, to be honest with you, you know, uh, there, was no, there was no guarantee. Here's Steve Harvey, uh, 2000, top of the world, kings of comedy movie. Number one movie at the box office. And I came to him, I said, hey, let's do local radio in L.A. Now, local radio in L.A., that doesn't make sense to anybody. He said, and I said, because I said, we want to, I said, let's control our voice. Let's control our media. And he said, cool, let's do it. How much are they paying? I said, they're going to pay you this much. He said, let's sign that deal right now. <laughs> and that started it all. You know, that started the whole process of, of allowing ourselves to comfortably start making decisions, the right decisions for our career. And that's really the key, putting yourself in the position that makes sense for you, not putting yourself in the position that makes sense for somebody else's success. And that's how we got started. Okay, well, that's that's some great advice. So now let's shift gears a little bit okay. because you, you've alluded to this, and, and I discussed it a little bit earlier, is mm-hmm. that every Monday at noon Eastern on Facebook and Twitter, you hold what I call a town hall, which you, you refer to as money-making conversations. Yes, sir. So tell us about this initiative and why do you do it? Well, I'm going to just tell you, I was doing it Monday, and um, and – I realize how much people. First of all, I, I, first of all, no one knows where to go to get good career and business advice. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. There's no. There's nobody that you can chat with. There's no one you can get on the phone. There's no one that you can call and say, "Hey, I have an issue. How do I? I, I have a fraud problem. How can I? Where would I go with that? Hey, what's the difference between? Somebody asked me a question. What's the difference between a business model and a business plan? And I'd explain to them what the difference was. 
Um, one person asked me a question about, okay, how do I protect my patterns when I when I hire contracts? Uh, the tailors. Uh, I have all these type of questions that I respond to. One person had a question about should I put my career on hold and uh, and move forward or should I follow my dreams and allow my career and my job work at the same time. That's something similar that I did when I was at IBM. I did stand up at night and I did my full time IBM job in the daytime. So I've had a lot of experiences I think that I want to share. And what I'm trying to do with everyday people is give them a place that they can go and speak to somebody with real advice, real career success. And also, I will never give anybody information, generic information, nor would I blow anybody off because I will actually find the correct information that will make them successful. And I, I know that folks are really, really appreciating um, your honesty and your candor and your willingness to help because I can even say I've personally benefited. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can say I sort of cyber stalked you for a while before we had oh, our first I, I interview. Know, I know, I know. <laughs> which is, which I thank you. You know, I thank, I thank you. Uh, I think it's trust too. You know, I, I think that um, I can't do it. At first, I was trying to do it. I started in December, and I was trying to do it like I told my staff I'd do it once a month. And then I did it one time, and I went, I can't do this once a month. And then I, then I told my staff, just give me the questions, and then I'll respond to them. And then, then I realized that, and that that didn't work because I really wasn't helping people. It wasn't until I went created a back-and-forth uh, format where I could go back and forth and exchange and build a relationship with a person who had a question that I could give them a correct answer. Mm-hmm. That was the key move. That was the key move. And, again, if you're going to do something, Sly, you got to be committed to it. And that's why I had to follow my own advice. If you you can't halfway give people advice on their career, you can't halfway give people advice on their business. You have to be committed to it, and that's what I did. And it's sort of interesting that you bring that up because I'm actually looking at your Twitter feed right now, and you sent out a message not too long ago, and you said you can't be halfway committed to something if you want 100 percent success. And that is just absolutely great because someone else told me, and he's a uh, CEO of, at a local company in the D.C. metro area, and he said to me, I asked him years ago, maybe about five, seven years ago, I said, I want to start my own business. Right. And he said, you cannot do it part time. He goes, if you're going to do it, you've got to go all the way in. And he also told me, he said, it's going to be one of the hardest things that you've ever done. He goes, there won't be any 40 hour work weeks. You're going to be working 60, 70, 80 hour work weeks. And I was like, there's no way. But now mm-hmm. that I'm in the middle of doing it, I understand because it takes a lot to sort of figure things out and, and mm-hmm. you got to persevere and move on. So I, I really appreciate it. So let's. And so, I just want to let you know that you go to my website, that slogan, success is not a part time job, mm-hmm. is on my Facebook page. So I, I totally agree with him. Success is not a part time job. Mm hmm. So what's in it for you? I mean, yes, you like giving advice, but, right. I mean, what, what's in it for you? Because there's a I lot know, of folks. You know, here's the deal. Yeah. Is that um, I will honestly tell you that um, I started doing this just to just to give back. Now it's starting to accelerate. So I don't know what it, what it where the future is going to take me with this, you know, from – you know, uh, the, you know, the marvelous article on me on the Huffington Post, and now I'm on the radio again. I was in Chicago on You and Me uh, morning show. They, 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 they love what, and it's about money making conversations. And they invited me back to do a two, two, two segments on their show, Jan, June 8th. So it's starting to uh, get to a level of, um, of uh, opportunity that I didn't see coming. And so right now, I'm just riding the wave. And I know in riding the wave, I got to give 100% because success is not a part-time job. And so everything else I do, and I'm going to tell you this, you have 24 hours in a day. And I tell people, I go to sleep to wake up. And that, that sounds weird when you hear it out loud but mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. I go to sleep with the goal, or with the idea that I'm already putting in motion what I got to do when I wake up. So when I wake up, I'm already focused on what I have to do. See, I don't wake up groggy. I don't wake up, I don't know what I'm going to do. When I wake <laughs> up, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Wow, that, that's great. And, you know, in, in the middle of that, you gave me a compliment on my article, so I'll say thank you. But I'll also let you know that that was probably one of the – I mean, our interview for my article on Huffington Post was probably about 
45 minutes we spent together. But that was actually a a life-changing experience for me because you provided so much valuable information in such a short period of time. And I couldn't even capture it all in the Mm -hmm. article that I did because I was constrained by space. But, you know, just being able to know that there are successful people that are willing to reach back and help other folks because we don't necessarily see that a lot because folks will sometimes make it and they're like, well, I made it. Go get it on your own. But to see someone like you who has been, you know, famous and made it for so long and now willing to give back, I I just think it's a role model for a lot of of other folks to to follow. I I like to believe that I have been giving back in in my television shows, uh, giving good value, uh, good quality programming. Uh, I like to believe I've been giving back in the 13 years we've been doing the Neighborhood Awards which is a war show about uplifting the good in the community through 12 categories. And now we have a three-day expo in Atlanta, Georgia, in the second year. I like to believe that I've been giving back in the Disney Dreamers program going into this eighth year, the Steve Harbor Mentoring Camp going into his seventh year. And so this is just a unique form that is that's really just focused on me for the first time in giving back. I have scholarship programs I do at the University of Houston that I graduate from. Um, and so I just think that this is just a natural side of me. You said that you found that you've been a giving person all your life. You just you just accepting it. And if you look back at my record, my resume, I've been giving man ever since I've been born. And God has allowed me to uh to live a night a life and now I'm able to give it in a lot a larger, a much more grander scheme because if I didn't do if I wasn't who I was, then money making conversation wouldn't exist. And nobody would show up for their advice or believe the advice. So I'm taking advantage of who I've become to create a forum where people uh, recommend or come to realize they're getting the absolute truth and there's no strings attached. And that's a great place to stop right there. And once we come back, let's talk about the importance of giving back and then also the Neighborhood Awards right after the break. News Talk 1450 WOL AM, where information is power. Good morning. This WOL traffic update is brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. 295 northbound It was uh, an accident that was near the 11th Street Bridge, slowing you down from Pennsylvania Avenue to get past it. Earlier accident was on Benning Road at Minnesota Avenue. Southbound 295 at the 11th Street Bridge accident, also out of the roadway right now. This weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family to find the forest nearest you. Go to discovertheforest.org. Now your WOL weather forecast brought to you by LifeLock for today. Clouds and sun, a high near 91. A few passing clouds overnight tonight, down to 59. For tomorrow, sunny despite a few afternoon clouds, high near 71. Your social security number is a key piece of info. Identity thieves used to impersonate you. Become a LifeLock member now. Use code TRUTH to save 10% at LifeLock.com. Code TRUTH at LifeLock.com. Com. Steve Hershorn for News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. News updates on the web at WOLDCnews.com. Welcome back to Beyond Just Talk with your host, S.L. Young. All right, folks, welcome back. You're listening to WLDC 1450 AM. Again, you'll have one more opportunity to dial in. If you have a question for uh, Mr. Rashawn McDonald, that number is 800-450-7876. And before the break, uh, Mr. McDonald, we were talking about the importance of giving back. Yes, sir. What would you like to tell folks about that? Um, fine time. I have a scholarship that I do at the University of Houston, and, uh, and each student can get a $2,500 scholarship each semester, they have to maintain a certain, maintain a certain GPA, and their degree has to be in math or sciences. Um, and I ran into a, a student who's on my scholarship program, and she hadn't been doing. She didn't want to. She didn't want to do community service, and that's part of the scholarship. Mm. And she said, "Cause she's busy. She's too busy." So, so I sat down with the board. I said, "I'm pulling her scholarship." They said, Rashad, I said, okay, if she's too busy now, then she will never find time to give back. Mm. Because if, you don't, if, 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 you, if you're so focused on life on yourself, then how can you make a difference in anybody's life? Because you've got to be able to, to look around and say that everything's not equal. And there has to be a situation where you can create some level of equalization. And that's what I try to do. I just try to give people a helping hand that hopefully through the success that I have, they would achieve an opportunity that no one else would have given them. 
So you have to give back. And uh, hopefully this young lady uh, sees that I'm, I'm serious. And if she finds time, all I want you to do, maybe you can just walk a 5K race to raise money for breast cancer. Or you can go to work for Goodwill for a day. I'm not trying to get you to take on no full-time job. I'm just asking you to do three things to show people that you care about them. That's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. And giving back does not require money. You can you do a lot not. to give back without having any money. I tell, I tell you, Sly, if, if, I, if, I, if I just let her go now, then she'll never be. She'll never learn the responsibility of what life is about. I'm giving back to you. Mm -hmm. How can you do that? Wait a minute. (laughs) This is a give back scholarship. This is a scholarship that wants your life to be better. That's why I'm giving you this scholarship. And then you turn around telling me that you don't have time to to go assist somebody, to to go and make somebody else's life better. I don't get it. And if you if they, if she doesn't get it, there's a whole lot of people that don't get it because they're so they're so busy worrying about their personal problems. Do you know how good you know? I'm telling you something. You know how good it is to be able to say what you what you're doing for somebody versus saying what you can't do for yourself. Mm. Try that conversation for a while. Just keep, just keep sitting around talking about what you can't do, and do, and start talking. But if you start talking about what you do do for other people. That's a different conversation, man. That's a, that's a that's a that's a game changer for you as a person and as a life. Yeah, and and I totally agree with you there because the greatest success that I've personally had has come from helping other people. And the more that you give back, you realize that we're all in this together and and we need to help each other. And you know, a lot of folks need some assistance, but they're not saying, you know, pull me up a lot of times, a lot of them are just looking for us to reach back and give, offer a hand so that yes, they can sir. reach their arm, their own arms out and reach up and pull themselves up. They just need that chance, that moment, that opportunity to shine. And too many times we're not giving folks that opportunity and we're, we're judging and we're holding folks back there you unnecessarily. Go. There you go. Preach, laugh. Preach. Now, it's your <laughs> I, show, brother. I'm sorry, but that's something that's just very, very passionate <laughs> to me, right? Here's the key, man. The key to what you're doing with this show is for people to understand who you are and your passion. And and a lot of people ain't gonna, are not going to like your passion. That's mm-hmm. all right. All you have to do is get the majority to like them. Mm-hmm. And that's how you're going to win. Because in the end, man, if you believe that what you're doing is right, then the people are going to follow you. People who people follow losers are a small group of people that eventually fall off. People who follow winners are a tremendous amount of people who have positive values. All you have to do is just stay focused and follow your passion. That's all I want to hear. All I want to hear from you on this show is what I just heard. A man who cares, a man who is not willing to, is not, is not afraid to tell people he's caring about them. Because that's what this show is about. At the very top of the show, this, that's what you said. You're doing a radio show to change lives, man. Just keep telling them that. And guess what? Anytime you need me, I'll be back on this show for you. And when I'm in D.C., I want to come in and studio and do it live in your studio. That's how much this is. That's how important your success is to me. Wow. Well, thank you uh, very much, because um, th- as you said earlier, I'm taking a lot of risk in doing this show. And I had to fight my own fears to just uh, mm-hmm. come in here and do this. But I'm doing this not because I want to be famous. I mm-hmm. have a purpose for the show. The show has a format. I want folks to learn about life and business because I struggled for many years on my own. Yes, and sir. this show is to help others to, to lift them up and, and share some of my perspective and experiences because we can either become bitter or better. And I refuse to become bitter because I've, if I become bitter, I become like them. But if I become better, then I can help a lot of other folks th- that are being left behind. And that's what this show is about. So thank you very much. That's what I like hearing. Sly. <laughs> <laughs> now we better move on before yeah, I start not. sobbing on that's the on right, the radio. Man. That's all right. That's all right to show your emotions. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, my whole thing is that I tell people all the time that I have cried in frustration. I have cried in happiness. And I've cried in fear. I've sat on the side of the road, man, going from a comedy gig and didn't know if I could stay awake to get to the gig. So I, I had tears in my eyes out of fear. But that fear didn't stop me. From, from from making it to that gig. That fear didn't stop me from that opportunity. And don't ever let fear stop anyone. Anyone who's listening, don't, please don't let fear be your master. Please don't let fear be your master. Control your destiny by looking fear in the eyes and telling them that I am the one in control. When I go to sleep, I wake up with the blessings of God, not fear. Mm. Thank you.
And before we start to run out of time here, I want to make sure that we have time to shift gears one more time and talk about the neighborhood awards. So awesome. if you could start by telling us what the neighborhood awards are and mm-hmm. why was it created? Neighborhood awards is what this whole conversation has been about this past hour, about uplifting people, giving people an opportunity to shine, and also making them feel good about themselves. Neighborhood Awards was created and first launched in 2000 in Los Angeles by Steve Harvey and myself. And it's about 12 categories in the neighborhood. Best car wash, best shoe shine, excuse me, but best car wash, best nail salon, best beauty salon, best barber shop, best community leader, best barbecue place, best soul food shop, best high school, best high school coach, best uh, best church, and best church choir. Those categories um, on our radio network and now through social, you can go to NeighborhoodAwards.com. That's NeighborhoodAwards.com, and you can nominate anyone from those 12 categories. And what we do is we take the top four nominees from each category and fly them to Atlanta, Georgia, for an award award ceremony that's hosted by Steve Harvey at Phillips Arena. And the Phillips Arena holds 13,000 people, and the show is sold out every year. Mm. And so what we do is we're not honoring any celebrity that night. We're only honoring the real stars of the community, and that's your listeners, everyday people, Mm -hmm. people who are making a difference, people who pay taxes, people who are good citizens, people who don't make the news because they're doing the things right. News is a lot about showing people what they do wrong because what they're doing it for ratings. That's what the Neighborhood Awards is not about. The Neighborhood Awards is about showing people doing things right. And we try to publicize it as much as possible and get as much news. So guess what? Instead of showing the marches on Baltimore, how about showing the good in Atlanta, Georgia, August 6th through the 9th, mm-hmm. called the Neighborhood Awards, mm-hmm. where African Americans from around the country come and uh, support their community. I mean, I think that's absolutely wonderful because we need more programs that recognize the many, many, many individuals that are out there that are giving every single day, but they never get any recognition. They don't have any moments to shine. And we need to lift those individuals up and make sure that they understand that the contributions that they're not that they're making to their communities are not just their communities, but to society as well. And we need to make sure that we do more of that. We're in a good space. I'm in a good space when I talk like this because I don't stutter and I'm not trying to make myself feel good because I'm telling the truth. And the Neighborhood Awards, if you've never experienced it, go to NeighborhoodAwards.com and see for yourself. And you'll see that it's a fun, it's for all age groups. We have, we have the College Expo where last year 500 students were able to register on the floor of the Expo into major colleges. And we're talking about colleges from Harvard, Marquette, uh, Grambling, Loyola Marymount, uh, UC David. So we're talking about colleges all over the country, Georgia Tech, Georgia State, uh, all HBCU schools. Over 30 colleges we have on the floor, and we also give away scholarships. We gave away $3 million, $3 million worth of scholarships on the floor of the expo. So, again, it's about uplifting. It's about feeling good. We have Greek step shows. Uh, we have the McDonald's Gospel Tour, headlined by Yolanda Adams. We have aerobics. We have health and wellness pavilion. We have, uh, we have good times. We have fun times. And we have uplifting lifestyle. And one more question for you. So are you looking at um, expanding some of the categories? I know you have a lot of categories already, but are you looking to expand the categories to recognize more folks with the success of this initiative? Well, what happened was when we we were in L.A., we had 19 categories. So we actually cut down to 12. And because we're just trying to – the show is so long, and now with this year I've been determined to get this show produced in two and a half hours, usually about three and a half hours. So I'm not looking to add any more categories. I'm always willing to adjust because best high school coach, coach used to be best fried chicken. And so I'm always looking to the award that, that fits the times and also fits a need. And right now I'm not afraid to change. Steve and I sit down every year, but we don't want to go beyond 12. 
Okay, well, that's great. And I think that's a great place to stop right now. I'd like to thank uh, Rashawn McDonald for being on my show today. I really appreciate having you here. So thank you so much for your time. And for everyone else, I hope that you enjoyed today's show. On next week's show, my guest will be Kristen Kane, who is a program manager at the Arlington County Sheriff's Department in Arlington, Virginia. Ms. Kane oversees over 50 different programs, and over 100 volunteers and staff are responsible for providing inmates with uplifting and educational services. And so remember, your candle is fueled from within, so don't let anyone reduce or block the fuel to maximize its brightness. Enjoy the rest of your week. Until next time, my friends, have a good one. It's on the web at WOLDCnews.com.